Hello, everybody. My name is Claudia Rivas. I'm a full-time librarian at Rio Hondo College Library, and today I'm going to be talking to you about zines. So what are zines? As explained by Los Angeles Public Library, they are pronounced like the word magazine, but without the mag. So just the zine. Zines. These are self-published, independently made, usually photocopied and have a small print run. So when we mean self-publish, that means anybody can make one. You, me, brother, sister, mom, dad, family member, boyfriend, girlfriend, anybody can make a zine. And they are independently made, which means that there is no publishing house or magazine company backing the maker. The maker is creating the content and publishing the content on their own. And that's why they are usually photocopied. The zine content can be anything, but some examples are that it can be personal, political, artistic, visual. But most importantly to know about zines is that there are no rules. Here are some zine covers as examples. Some of these are more common or popular, such as Bikini Kill and Girl Germs. You'll notice that most of these are photocopied. That is still the most common way of duplicating a zine is through a photocopier. But you'll notice that some are also in color and seem to have a higher production value. Zines do range from low end to high end, and this is usually reflected in the cost of the zines. A brief history of zines. Believe it or not, zines started out with sci-fi fans. Science fiction fans used zines as a way to promote and publish their fan fiction. Fan fiction at the time was actually written reviews, uh, commentary, and news about their favorite books and their favorite authors. And how they would distribute this information was by handing them out from fan to fan in small communities. That is still the most popular way of distribution today. In the 1970s, the punk revolution was the beginning for zinesters. Punk kids really embraced the do-it-yourself aspect of zines. And they took advantage of the new technology at the time, which was a photocopy machine. Creating zines was and still is very inexpensive and it's fun and you can publish anything you want. This was a perfect tool for the punk counterculture movement at the time. In the 90s came the Riot Girl movement. This emerged out of the alternative and punk music scene of the time. They used the adaptability and format of the zine to promote their music and to forward their own political agendas. The Riot Girl era produced personal zines and political zines with explicitly feminist themes. One of the staple zines of the time was Bikini Kill, which you saw a sample of at the beginning. Bikini Kill and many others promoted girl power, activism, personal journalism, and of course, their music. Today, in the age of the internet and computers, and also to save money with printing costs, a lot of zinesters host their work online in the form of e-zines or digital zines. Tumblr is favorite for teens and tweens, but many zinesters usually host their e-zines using a personalized domain. The advantage to this is that they can charge access for the content of their zine or manage the sale and distribution of their zines themselves. Another popular platform is Etsy. Digital zines also serve as a great resource and networking uh, site. They serve as a gateway to expand the zine community. Regardless of the format or publication date, zines are always incredibly inexpensive, usually 
price points are around a dollar to three dollars and the opinions are always meant to be radical. So why are zines important? Many, many reasons. Primarily, they are a great platform to promote activism, freedom of speech, and freedom of expression. They are a great tool to empower future authors and artists. So if you are an aspiring author or artist but cannot get your work published or recognized, this is a great way to get yourself out there, circulate your work, get people to notice you, learn about you. They cost almost nothing to create and they enable you to utilize items that you probably already have in your home. For example, all you really need to create a zine is a single sheet of paper and something to write with. They are adaptable to all age groups and all skill sets. So you do not need to be an artist. You don't have to have any kind of previous experience or skill to create a zine. They take on an endless variety of formats, although there are two common formats which I will discuss with you. And any theme can be addressed and you can use a variety of materials. Very important, zines value freedom from rules above all else. Additional reasons that zines are important. They have always been a symbol of resistance from the establishment. In other words, anti-man. They move away from commercial production. So they stay away from mainstream media and the mainstream message. Their objective is really to provide a voice for marginalized youth and a voice for the minority versus majority. So if you think about the content that you see in mass media today, in magazines, newspapers, TV shows and movies, you really want to stop and think about whether your community, your culture is being represented. Are you being represented? Most of the times the answer is no. And zines are a great platform to promote that yourself. So they are a great platform to be read, to be seen, and to be heard. They also serve as important historical sources, such as a primary source. I usually give the example of the Women's March. So if you participated in a women's, women's March last year and you wrote a zine about your experience at the march, that zine, 50 years from now, becomes a primary historical document for whoever is looking back to see and understand what it was like to be part of that march. But right now we are living a worldwide crisis. This is a perfect opportunity to document what is happening in your life at the time. A hundred years from now, when we're past this pandemic, citizens of the world can look at your zine and know and understand what was happening in your life, in your mind, and for many others at the time of this pandemic. Zines are also a great tool to preserve cultural heritage. So if, for example, your culture is not widely represented, a zine is a great method to capture that. When I was visiting a public library recently, I saw a zine created by a Salvadorian. I was very shocked and surprised and excited because I'm Salvadorian and my culture is very rarely represented in mass media. And when I saw this zine, I was able to connect to it. Zines provide that kind of opportunity. They are also a great way to share stories. And because of that, they offer collections with meaning. So why are zines in libraries? Well, libraries are natural repositories. That means we hold things for people to come look at, read, and borrow. Zines are a natural fit because they are written by different people, about different topics, and at different times. Believe it or not, zines were not circulated, which means allowed to be borrowed and taken home, 
Until recently, about five years ago, Long Beach Public Library was one of the first public libraries to allow people to borrow zines and take them home. This trend caught on and Los Angeles Public Library now has seven branches that has zine libraries. Libraries are also a safe space. So it makes sense that they are a great place to make and show zines. Also, if you establish a connection with your library, you could be a local author, local community member that is represented in their zine collection if you share your published zine with them. So what does this mean for Rio Hondo College Library? Rio Hondo College Library has never had a zine collection. Zine collections are actually rare at community college libraries. Not many have them. The closest community college library that has a zine collection is Chafee College in Rancho Cucamonga. Rio Hondo College Library would be a pioneer in our area by having a zine collection for students to browse, read, and borrow. We have already started to build a collection. Many of our zines are from students who have donated their zines, either their original zines, or they have allowed us to make a copy of their original zine. Many of these zines were made in one of our zine workshops, hosted in the library over the past two semesters. We have also begun to acquire zines from zinesters all around the world. With the help and support of Rio Hondo College students, we hope to continue expanding our collection. Currently, our zine collection is not available for circulation, as we are still growing and developing it. We are currently in the process of continually acquiring materials and we hope to begin circulation in the next semester or so. As I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, there are an endless number of themes and types of zines that you can make because there are no rules and the possibilities are endless. This is just a very brief example list of different types of zines that you can make, mostly just to give you some ideas. A very common form of zine is the comic zine, which is basically a comic book in the shape and format of a zine. There is also a cooking zine where you could potentially write recipes, uh, maybe pass down family recipes or create new recipes that you would distribute to people, friends. An education zine would be a zine that is teaching somebody something maybe science related, math, any topic you can think of. A fanzine is how zines began, which is basically someone who writes a zine in honor of something or someone that they are a fan of, such as a band, a writer, an author, a novel, um, a musician, an artist, anybody. A fashion zine is a zine about fashion, maybe creating your own designs uh, or a zine about the latest or most recent trends. A horror zine, so potentially telling a horror story or focusing on the genre of horror. Illustration would be just to show maybe your talents as an artist or an illustrator. LGBTQIA, so a zine that promotes uh, an LGBTQ lifestyle or supports is an ally for that community. A literary zine, so this would be a zine about short stories, for example. A music zine would be very similar to a fan zine. Uh, perhaps your focus is on a particular type of music, uh, maybe pop or hip hop or jazz any type of music that you're a fan of, or maybe you write songs, you're a songwriter, you want to do a zine about songs, songwriting, put your songs out there. A personal zine is also known as a per zine, which is a zine about yourself, a zine about your life, maybe your experiences, telling stories, um, anything that is personal to you. 
there is a photography zine where you could create a collection of your photos or you could also assemble a collection of photos that you love and make sure to cite the photographer who took the photo give them credit for that photo and maybe discuss a little bit about why you love that photo a poetry zine pretty self-explanatory is a zine all about poetry or with poems in it there are many zinesters who write their own poetry but you could also potentially collect poems that you love just make sure that you're always citing the original author the political or social justice zine is very popular this is to empower certain movements uh, so as i mentioned in the presentation the feminist or girl power movement was very popular zine with Bikini Kill, but there are many different aspects of politics or social justice that you can jump into. Self-care, so these are zines that promote self-care. They give you maybe tips on how to take care of yourself, like um, 50 ways to relax or 10 ways to uh, keep your nails looking great, um, things like that. A spirituality, z a spirituality zine, so a zine about maybe uh, a particular religion or belief that you have that you'd like to express or share with others. And a technology zine, so maybe you want to teach somebody about a new type of tech or you want to promote uh, technology that's out there, you can do that with the zine. You can also use technology to create a zine. So there are some zinesters who like to use Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop in creating their zine. That's also a possibility. Normally, this is the point in the presentation when I mention the current zine collection that the library has for students to look at right now. And I usually invite students to come to our table and browse through all of the zines that we have. They are a great source of inspiration for your own zine making. And they also are a great example of how the possibilities are endless. Um, there really are no limits. And oftentimes uh, students get stuck because the possibilities are endless and it's hard to think up of ideas or to take a certain direction when making a zine. So normally this is when I invite students to look at our collection. Unfortunately, right now, you're unable to see our collection. But I do invite you to look at some digital zines that we have available on our LibGuide, which I'm going to show you in a few seconds. Uh, there are a lot of digital zines out there for you to browse through. It's not the same as seeing the physical zines in your hand, but they are a great example of what's out there and what's possible. And I definitely encourage you to maybe Google it or check out on YouTube. I do have some videos for you to look at as well. Um, but look for zinesters out there. Try to get some examples just to spark that inspiration in you to create your own zine. Also, keep in mind that as a library, we don't censor materials. And so we don't censor zines either which means that there is some content in our zine collection that is mature content. Um, and we take that very seriously uh, as a library. So just be aware that uh, any content that you create in your zine, if you choose to share it with the library, we will not censor it um, because we don't promote censorship. And uh, we want to present your material as you create it. Uh, so just be aware of that also when you're looking at zines is that zines and their zinesters are never censored. And that's actually the point of a zine is to be self-expressive and to be honest. So there are two resources I want to point you to. The first one is our LibGuide on zines. And this is the URL libguides.riohondo.edu backslash zines. Your professor might also share this with you on their Canvas page for easier access for you to link, but it's also located on our library page. So first let me click on the link and take you to the libguide and I will also show you how to get there from our library page. 
So through the link, it should take you directly to the LibGuide. This is a library guide that I've created specifically about zines to give you a little bit of background. There's a little video here, a YouTube video, a short documentary about the power of zines. And then at the top, you'll notice some tabs. The first tab is a gallery of images. These are different zines, um, zine covers, examples for you to look through. The next tab is how to. So normally during my zine workshops, I like to show this YouTube video, how to make a zine. I highly recommend that you watch this video if you want to make a mini eight page zine. This second video at the bottom is also demonstrating a mini eight page zine. They both offer great techniques and advice on how to do the fold, how to do the cut, how to do the layout, the planning, and ordering of pages. I also have over here on the left some websites on how to make a zine, some tools, and over here on the right hand side more videos. There are plenty of zinesters out there who want to share with you how to make a zine and how they go about with their process. Some of them are more complicated and in-depth than others. It's up to you how many of these you'd like to watch, but they are um, pretty interesting and useful. Then you'll notice here is a tab for our digital zines. So these are in alphabetical order by title. These are different zines that have been published online by people. Um, so you could just click on a link and it will open up to show you their zine or it'll take you to their web page that will host their zine. And you can scroll through and see their zine and what it looks like and the kind of content that they have in their zine. So unfortunately, because you're not able to see the physical collection that we have in the library, I do invite you to look through as many of these as possible for examples, but also the how-to um, zine videos should show you some good examples as well. Then I have a tab for events. So normally these would be workshops that we would be offering this semester. Unfortunately, because of everything going on right now, all of these workshops have been canceled. Um, and also I know that LA Zine Fest has been canceled um, as of now. Long Beach may still take place because that's typically in October, I think, or September. So that's still a possibility of happening. Um, and the rest of them, I'm not sure. You can just check for yourself. But the importance of this page is uh, still relevant to you. These are zine fests. This is where zinesters go. They get a table and they put their zines out for people to purchase. And as I mentioned before, most zines are very low in cost. They run anywhere from 25 cents to $10. And this just depends on the content, the quality, um, if it's just photocopied or if it's done in color, if it's a simple printer paper or if it's a cardstock. It varies depending on the creator. Um, but this is the best platform to get to see different types of zines and purchase zines, support zinesters. And if you are a zinester yourself, you could potentially trade your zine with other zinesters. And I also included some out of state zines just to show you that zine making exists all over this, the United States and also all over the world. There are many zinesters in the UK, in Australia, all over the world. And then the last tab that I have here for you is zine resources. Here we have um, databases that will give you more information about zines. And some related websites, so some places where you can buy zines, and then um, other websites that can tell you or show you a little bit more about zines as well. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out to you is $100 in a t-shirt. This is a documentary that's on Films on Demand. It's one of our databases. And you can find that database here on this list and when you click on it, if you're not already logged into Access Rio, it's going to ask you to log into Access Rio if you are off campus. 
And once you're logged in, you can just type in the title, $100 in a t-shirt, or you can even just type in the word zines and it'll show you the link to the documentary that you can watch. Um, it's very interesting, all about zine making. Now to get to this libguide from the library homepage on our library website, you would click on the left hand side right here where it says research guides, click on that. And you can go just based on alphabetical order from this list, scroll all the way down till you see zines, there it is, and click on the link and it'll take you to the zine libguide. And so what do you do once you have finished your zine? Well, number one is to share what you've made. That's the primary purpose of a zine for whatever it is you're trying to share, whether that be your love of a band, um, tips and tricks on how to do something, recipes, uh, personal stories, poetry, whatever it is, it is to share it. Um, so obviously you can share it with just those people close to you, your friends and your family, uh, but if you give us permission, the library would love to make a copy of your zine to add to our collection. And um, you would be a great contributor and a member of our zine collection community. Um, if you don't want your zine at all, you could donate it completely to us. We'd be happy to add it to our collection as the original copy as well. But if you turn out to really love zine making and zines, you could become a zinester and sell your zine at a zine fest, uh, which would be awesome to get yourself out there, especially if you're promoting something like your art or your writing skills or photography skills or whatever talent uh, it is that you have. You can also trade with other zinesters. And last but not least, you can, of course, just keep it all to yourself and not share it at all. Um, but please try to remember that the spirit of a zine is to share, get the word out, promote, self-promote, um, or just share. So there are two common formats for a zine. The first is a half page fold. This is more commonly known as a booklet. The advantage to a half page fold or a booklet is that you can use as many sheets of paper as you need. All you need to do is fold each page in half. To assemble it, you would just staple the spine of the pages together, or you could even just leave them without stapling. Some zinesters like to uh, sew them together or get very creative with their bookmaking skills. This is recommended for people who have large artwork that they'd like to share or who have a lot of content that they'd like to share. If you're not sure how many pages you need, it is usually a good idea to plan ahead of time. Uh, kind of break it down by pages, what content you want in each, and that'll give you a good idea of um, how many pages you might want to use. The other common format is the mini Eight page zine. This is an eight fold. You use one single sheet of paper and fold it into eight squares. And you do require one cut in the middle of the sheet of paper in order to collapse it into a small booklet. And this is recommended for people who don't have too much content that they want to share or they feel that they can get their point across in that limited content. And there is a YouTube video that I recommend that you watch if this is the format that you're interested in. So again, going back to our libguide, you'll see here in the gallery, this is an example of a half fold or a booklet zine. Um, and that seems to be the most, one of the most common types is a booklet here. And as I mentioned, it does allow for a lot of content. Now for the mini eight page zine, I recommend going to the how to tab. And both of these videos will show you how to create the mini eight page zine. As you can see, it's a single sheet of paper. 
and I'll just fast forward here so you can see there is a cut that is required in the middle of the page after it's folded and then it's broken down. She also gives some great recommendations about organization for the page. The important thing to know about the mini zine is that half of the content is upside down where the other half is right side up because when you fold it and collapse it down uh, once it's all folded down it will all be right side up so she gives some great suggestions about how to organize your pages and this other video also does a good job of demonstrating how to plan and organize your zine, how to fold it, and then again, uh, numbering the pages, keeping in mind that some of them are upside down and some of them are right side up. So some great tips and tricks there on how to do those two common formats for zine making. And that's it guys. Thanks for listening to my presentation on zines. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. My contact information and a link to email me is also on the libguide that I pointed out, but I have my email listed here for you to jot down. It is C Rivas, which is R-I-V-A-S at riohondo.edu. My name again is Claudia Rivas and I can answer any questions that you have about zines or if you need any help with coming up with an idea, um, I can also help you out with that as well. And good luck and happy zine making.